I have another one of these. And I have this huge monster for the old copter I had. This is a 6,200 milliamp hour battery. I've got this one, 5,200 milliamp hour battery. Uh, I've got this zippy, which is uh, terrible, but it would it still works. It's all puffy, but so be it. So there I've got 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. I've got over an hour, 70 minutes of flight time here at a hover. If only I could just get the power into the copter. So what makes it so difficult? What are the challenges? So let's let's carry on with that. So as with everything uh, quadcopter related or multi-rotor related, it's all about weight and it's all about the amount of battery you can pack into it while still gaining some performance. There's a point where you get diminishing returns. The more batteries you stack on, the harder the motors are going to have to drive to lift the copter to carry the extra weight of the battery. So if we take an example, this is a pretty standard battery. If I weigh that, that's 500 and, let's say 500 and, I don't know, 20 grams, 515 grams of battery. So that's half a kilo of battery. We can... Um, Half a kilo of battery needs to be lifted and lifts the copter for uh, between 10 and 15 minutes. Now let's get a cable, a piece of cable. This is 10 meters of speaker wire, a small gauge speaker wire. And let's put that on the scale. Here we go. Okay, let's put that in there. It's not all in there, but it's not. It's just for demonstration purposes. So there we've got 420 grams of cable weight. So that weight has to be picked up. It starts with no weights, but as you're flying up, the cable weight will increase until you ride the top of the length of the cable. Then you're lifting all the way to the cable, and the battery is connected to the bottom. Not a problem so far because it's lighter. The problem comes in the following. If you look at the width of cable. The diameter of cable they use here. This is, for example, this is 10 American wire gauge, 10 AWG. 10 AWG can carry a lot of current, probably about 50 amps, I would imagine, off the top of my head. This one's much thinner. This little guy's only 14 AWG, but this 14 AWG can probably carry 30 uh, amps. However, it's still thicker than the speaker cable which I just showed you that speaker cable can safely only carry 10 amps and the amount of resistance over the distance of the cable um, stays constant but the longer the length of cable the more resistance you'll have so I'd like to show you a demonstration of how that can play a role so let's do that next okay so here's the setup if, just ignore that this thing is not very well calibrated but here's the setup. The piece of cable that I just showed you. I've got a battery, fully charged LiPo, connected to the um, battery meter here. And I'm going to take the end of the cable, the end of my speaker wire. I'm going to plug it into our test. And if anyone's seen the test, these are the... Um, battery torture tests which test how much current a battery can supply over its rated or under its rated amount at least and here's the other end of the cable and it's going through this whole loop of wire here this is all the wire that the power is going to go through and this is 10 meters of speaker cable and then about 2 meters of really thick um, silicon wire, heavy gauge silicon wire. Now there's some things you're going to have to watch out for or want to look out for. So I'm going to plug this in here. So here you see this is reading 16.73 which is far more accurate than the 16.8. It doesn't really matter. There's no current flowing at the moment. You see zero amps. Nothing is drawing any power. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on the test rig and what you want to look out for is the power on the battery side of things. So this side and the power which has come through after going through the coil of wire. So that's going to there. So these two voltages are important. So let's fire this up. 
and see what happens, and then do some calculations. So there you see 17.1, and you see 16.65. There we go. I think we've seen enough. So let me unplug this and move this away and show you what just happened there. All right. So what happened there? What did we see there? We saw that on the battery side, I'm going to just draw a battery indicator, we had 16.7 volts about. On the motor side, so let's just draw a motor symbol here, we had 8.7 approximately. It doesn't really matter. Um, we were, and then in between this whole thing, we had a lot of wire, about, I'd say about 12 meters of wire. So what's what went wrong here? So the difference in voltage here is 8 volts. So we lost 8 volts, and we were drawing. The, I know that battery torture test, if I hook it up directly, it will draw about 60, 70 amps. But I was only able to draw 22 amps. So we drew 22 amps. So what happened to the rest of that power, or voltage at least? So power, the uh, measurement of power equals, excuse me, P, Power equals voltage times current. So we've got 8 times 22, which gives us about 160. Let's just go about 160. Oh, I've gone off the screen here. So, so 8 times 22 equals 160 watts. So what happened? We created a 160 watt heating element because when I unplugged it this wire was warm and no doubt it's that all that power is being dissipated as heat in the wire because the wire is not thick enough to carry all the power and therein lies the fundamental problem of tethered drones so what can we do okay there's a couple of things we can one larger wire two Shorter wire. Three over voltage. But this is not efficient because that'll just waste power. So let's just get rid of that right now. So for example, using a 6S and then hoping that'll become a 4S. But all that's going to do is just waste a lot of power. So if we use a larger gauge wire, we're going to increase the uh, weight of it. So that will work, but we have to make sure that our copter can carry the extra weight. And also, this wire, this, this silicon wire that we use for building all the models, it's great, but the silicon's quite heavy, the insulation's quite thick, and essentially you don't need it to pick it up. That's why I chose the speaker wire, just as a, a proof of concept, or non-concept, because I knew that it was too thin in the first place. Secondly, let's just assume that I, instead of using 10 meters, I just used 5 meters, and then I doubled it. So the weight would be the same, but I'd only be able to fly up 5 meters, however, I, going by these calculations, I'd only be dropping 80 watts of power, so maybe I'd have um, 14 volts at the end. I don't know. Um, I'll have to experiment with that, getting the second length of that and uh, attaching it to that. <coughs> this is why the superconductor would be the holy grail. Imagine you could just get tiny little strands of wire and fly something as high as you wanted and as far as you wanted, and you could just connect it up to the batteries in the bottom. So in the next video we'll be doing, I'll show you the new setup, because this wire is just not going to work, it's just too, it's just too thin, the gauge is too thin, to hold, to, um, to deliver the power that it needs, and the wastage is just too high. Um, and in the next video we'll be investigating ways to make this more efficient and make it actually a, a viable thing as a drone in the sky. Thanks for watching, see you later, bye.